This is my Super Black Eagle 3, and as many of you SBE3 owners know, these babies tend to shoot high. Too damn high, in my opinion. That's too high! Now, Benelli says in this video right here that we should use the provided shims to adjust our point of impact to our fit and liking. Well, I've shimmed this gun as much as I can, and it still shoots really high. So here's my current pattern, and you can see <laughs> Well, maybe you can see. Oh, okay. Let me bring this up here closer. You can see that essentially it's 100% above the point of aim. Hopefully you can see that. I'll get another shot of that too. There's one, one shot below the point of aim. Everything else above. Now, I will admit that I have a tendency to pull up when I, when I shoot. be that as it may it's still even if i even if we brought this down a couple inches there's still only going to be a couple of the shot below the point of aim so that's freaking high and this is what i was using i used the uh the browning wicked wing xd three inch number fours that are carrying an ounce and a quarter of shot and the um the, I'm using the Benelli manufacturer's uh, choke tube that is um, the modified, modified choke tube. So I've seen quite a bit of chatter online telling everybody to adjust this collar right here so it doesn't touch the, this barrel ring right here. And let's, let's put this thing back together, which is always easier said than done with this SBE-3. Oh, for the love of Pete, there we go. Okay, so this collar here, they say, is resting against this barrel ring. And uh, if, we, if we heat this up and pull it down, adjust this down to where the ring is no longer resting on the barrel, then that should help with our point of impact. So with this feeler gauge, I can see that mine isn't even touching, I think. Down here at the bottom, I've got eight, I'm eight thousandths away from this barrel ring. But as I go up towards the top, I can't really get it. it. It gets tighter and the tolerances get tighter. So, and I can't really tell if it's touching with the tools I have because I, I, there's no room for me to get in, get in here. So I'm gonna move it to see if I can get it closer to what I want, which is about a 70-30 mix high-low. Um, but honestly, it's not like I can't hit anything with this gun. After all, I did just shoot a limit of chucker in this video right here. But bring him down the point of impact at all would make me happy. Like I said, I tend to shoot high. Okay, let's do this. Now, this collar is glued on here with some Loctite or some such product that needs a heat source to unlock. So, which I have happen to have right here. And once it gives way, you can use a pair of uh, channel locks or vice grips to move this thing. Or, but that's going to leave you open to mar in the collar, which, I don't know, it, it's not that big of a deal. It's going to be hidden behind this forestock. But, uh, or you could use a strap wrench, which I, my strap wrench is a POS, so I'm not going to even try with that thing. Of course, um, a wise man would empty his, make sure his gun is empty. Um, and of course, there's obviously not one in the chamber, but neither are, is there anything in the magazine. All right, we won't make you watch the whole bit of that. I'm gonna have this guy around here like so. Oh yeah, she's she's coming. She's, she's coming there. She's coming. Okay. So, okay. I'm doing it the wrong direction. I should probably go farther down the barrel or down the magazine, which I just did. Ouch. That's yeah, that's warm. That's warm. Okay. So, Let's put the barrel back on and then measure it because I remember it was eight thousandths out. So um, with that feeler gauge, so I didn't mark it, but I know um, the measurement. If you haven't figured it out by now, I'm left-handed, as is this shotgun. 
Okay, feeler gauge. So it was eight thousandths, so I probably need to make it larger. And Leon is getting larger. And Leon's getting larger. Okay, yeah, that's hot, but okay, so that's, that's, there's 18 thousandths out. That's, I'm, this thing is no longer touching for sure. Let me grab one of these lights right here. If I highlight it from behind, I can see on the top side of the barrel that this thing is no longer touching, which is what they said to do. So I'm not going to lock it in place there with more uh, Loctite slash Permatex um, at this point. Let's go out with another piece of cardboard and do another pattern test. It's the top. Well, that's better. Where were we? I moved the collar and, and it has come down. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and at any rate, 218 pellets above the point of aim and what thir and 13 below at or below one of them right on the line there and uh so i've done what i can do with the gun and i was hoping that i could do more um, maybe there's aftermarket shims to put in here or something i haven't looked at that at all some folks say uh, you can get a, a larger bead here but i don't use that anyway like you're not supposed to use that it's point and shoot you know, it's like hunting by braille. <laughs> so why would I put something larger on there that I don't use anyway? So I, like I said, I did what I can do with the gun. Now I, I'm gonna have to learn to shoot it lower. So that's the story. But what we still need to do tonight is glue that collar back into place. So let's get to that. I do want to clean this up. There was some goo in there. Uh, you can maybe see that a little bit. There's. Yeah, that's coming right out of there. Some of that dried over glue. That's cleaned off there now. So we've got some of this medium strength Loctite. Well, it's not Loctite, but it's, it's Permatex. Dial it up. And it says do not touch the, the metal with the tip, which I just did. A little pinch in between your cheek and gum. I'm going to roll that. Oh yeah, it's gonna make a mess. Perfect. Down, down there quite a bit. And okay, boom. That's on there. And I am gonna put this on there just so this thing doesn't move at all. Right? I mean that's we got her clamped on. Okay, so now I'm using the 22 one thousandths. Um, so to back this off against that. So that's so. And oh, you know what? As I've tightened this on, this collar has tilted back some because it's even. Before it would get tighter when I go towards the top and it still is a little bit eh, not much man not much anyway I'm 22 thousands off this thing and I'm gonna back it off a skosh more just because come on boom okay and that's that all right there you have it so we've adjusted where that collar sits up against this barrel ring. It does, in fact, shoot a little bit lower, um, this being the pattern uh, after I moved it. It still shoots high. I'm going to have to learn to shoot lower. So that's what I know. Um, hopefully this was helpful for you guys, and I'd uh, love to see you guys out in the field. Cheers. While this project wasn't particularly effective for me, it's easy enough to complete in an attempt to bring down the point of impact of your SPE3 if you're having this same issue.